Okay, thank you, Paige. Um, so we are here, as Paige set up very well for you, um, to talk about our 3D journey um, at Nordstrom. So one thing that you might know about Nordstrom is that the customer is our number one priority. Um, and really getting, our focus right now is really getting the right product um, at the right time in the right place. Um, and in 2018, our Nordstrom brands, we realized that we really needed to work on, oh, thank you. Uh, we really needed to work on how we could achieve that better um, and really getting that product um, faster to the customer. And so we came up with um, what you see on the screen here are just 10 opportunities that we could think of. And so we got together um, as an implementation team and a strategy team and really thought about how we could do that. And one of the solutions was, um, one of many, was um, implementing a 3D uh, design and development tool. Um, and so we set out um, to look at how we can do that. And we started engaging with different brands um, or software providers to see what was out there, started talking to other people in the industry to see how they had used 3D. Um, and what we came up with was that we needed to approach this in a very different way than we had approached other technology implementations of ERP systems or a Flex PLM or PTC system. This really was going to take a very strategic way of very much starting very small. Um, and you can see up here we use this crawl, walk, run um, approach where we started with um, the smallest amount, piloting with teams, really having a very strong vision of what we wanted to do, um, and then really focused on how we could iterate on that um, before rolling out to other brands. We really looked at data and how we could use and measure. Um, what 3D could do for us um, against that success criteria. Um, and then we keep this continuous improvement mindset all the time of maybe we have a process, but how can we tweak it to have it be a little bit better? Um, and then another big thing that we were looking at was um, how can we use not just a steering committee of leadership to help us lead through this change, but also subject matter experts. Rachel and I are not um, in the technical design or design background. We're more on the system implementation side. So we knew that finding those subject matter experts that could help us from a grassroots standpoint um, could really help us. Um, and so we set out with that, with these four different phases um, that we'll walk you through today. Um, so our first phase was the initiate phase. And what we did here was we knew we needed to have a really strong business case. We needed to have it be very specific. Um, we wanted to start very small and narrow. Um, and so we set out looking at speed to market. So how could we eliminate fit samples um, to get us closer to the customer? Um, and how can we look at design intent to make sure that fit wasn't changing um, if design needed to make changes? Um, and then how could we um, collaborate better? How could we make real-time changes on fit and pattern with our vendors and with our designers um, quicker and more often. Um, and then definitely on the sample and waste reduction. We had a lot of waste in our um, sample process around waiting for pattern engineers um, and just going through multiple fits. Um, and so that was a big bottleneck for us that we set out. Um, I think a big part of this as well is around the communication um, and how we could socialize this to leadership. So we kind of set our business case, we set our initiatives and how we were going to measure ourselves against these three areas. Um, and then we socialize that a lot with our leadership as well as with our um, technical designers. Great. So once we set out and we decided on Browseware, we, we went through a big process of determining which uh, 3D software we were going to go with. Um, Browseware was the, th the one we decided on. Um, we set out to develop a process. This is brand new to us. Um, keeping in mind our goals, so our speed to market, how we're collaborating, um, and then how we can reduce samples. Um, and then also innovate. We wanted to bring in the innovation portion. So we trained all of our pilot users on two processes, vendor with 3D and vendor without 3D. So the vendor with 3D, um, some of our partners do have browseware and we were able to collaborate with them where they were closest to the pattern. They're the ones that are developing the samples, um, but that turn time is a little bit longer. And so we also wanted to bring it in in-house and do the internal development where our turn time was a little bit shorter, but we, um, it took up a little more of our technical designer's time. We also, something f that we found incredibly, incredibly important was we had a dedicated 50% capacity SME whose job was really to just experiment, test the limits. Um, 3D is brand new to a lot of these tech 
these technical designers. And so she was really just jumping in saying, could we get this into this product category? Or how are we doing with these processes? Are there different ways to work? And that was um, really the, the key piece for this. Oh. Um, also, we wanted to understand and know that this was not just an impact on technical designers. It was, we wanted to take a holistic approach and know that 3D really touches from one end of the product development cycle to the next. Um, so as we went through and developed our change management, we kept in mind not just design or technical designers, but our designers, how it affected raw materials, how it affected our product merchandisers, and made sure that we were also, while socializing with technical designers, socializing with these teams as well. Um, once we introduced it to them, we went into our pilot phase. And so in our pilot phase, we were running parallel processes where we were developing in 3D and getting physical samples in. Um, and then we got feedback not just from technical design on the fit, but on design from the design intent and from our merchandisers on how comfortable they felt um, designing in th or selling in 3D. So we weren't just going straight from just showing physical samples to just so showing 3D. We would show them side by side and then gather feedback. So it really built confidence in the system. Um, we were able to understand how 3D translates to real bodies, and then um, it allowed us to gather data um, so that we can make better decisions going forward. So as we finished um, the pilot, we really realized that although we set out initially um, and set our initial requirements on how could we focus more on fit um, and get our first fit approved right off the bat, um, we realized that there was areas that were very dependent on that um, up in the beginning of our process and just organically through working, um, as Rachel mentioned, with the other areas of the business, we really saw that um, design intent and alignment up front um, and then bringing virtual samples into our buy meeting um, before we're even looking at fit was also very instrumental for 3D. Um, and so from a virtual assortment standpoint, um, we actually started trickling in um, the 3D images, some of which you saw on this slide previously, to our buy meetings, showing them a physical sample um, as well as the virtual sample. Um, and the adoption has... Um, and the feedback has actually been um, quite great. Um, and so we've, as we're moving forward in rolling this out more, we're gonna start showing both in buy meetings to start getting people more familiar. Um, and that kind of goes back to our crawl, walk, run. It's still in the crawl phase, but we're just trying to trickle information as we can um, and get people a little bit more comfortable with it um, and just increase that communication and that familiarity with 3D. Um, and that also brings us to our lessons learned. So as we finished the pilot, um, and as we've mentioned, we had very strict um, measures of success that we captured cycle time and um, how many fit samples and how long it took. Um, and we also wanted to make sure that we were looking at it from um, a qualitative perspective as well. Um, and so we got a lot of feedback, we did surveys, um, and there was three kind of main areas that we um, had lessons learned in. Um, in the organization and training area, I think the biggest one was the 3D champions. Um, so we've mentioned them before, but we had subject matter experts um, that we really honed in on their skills for 3D, um, and they they were very instrumental in um, kind of our grassroots campaigning to the other designers and technical designers and merchandisers of how great the tool is um, and what it can do for our goals that we've set out for as a company um, and how they can really be instrumental in helping with that. Um, and so we'll definitely be continuing that. And then in our business process, um, I think a big learning for us was on our vendor quality standards. Um, and so that is what we are asking our vendors to do. And we've put together um, just kind of our best practices around that. And we've been working with two of our main strategic um, agents on um, using browseware as well. And it became very clear um, that we need to, to give them some guidelines of how do we want this image to come back? What are we expecting? What are they expecting? What's gonna help them um, when we send it? Um, and so we've been, we're still implementing and improving that daily, um, but that is one thing from a process standpoint that we hadn't thought of as much upfront is what that vendor needs from us and what we need back from them. 
Um, and then from a browser and a tool standpoint, I think our biggest lesson learned um, was around the tool complexity. Um, browser is a very user-friendly tool and our um, technical designers love working in it, um, but it is complex and it takes a while to learn it um, and to finesse it and get really good at it. And we had started with training 10 users um, and only five of them were really using it on like a 75% of their day. Um, and those five users are now excelling um, in 3D and doing some amazing work. And the others that didn't have product right away to work in 3D just lagged behind a little bit. Um, and so as we move forward um, in our roadmap, we'll be very much trying to dedicate if we're training you on it. We want you to go deep into it in your capacity instead of just kind of surfacing um, the top layer. Um, and that takes us into our rollout phase. So um, we're actually now, as of last month, moving into what we're calling our foundation phase. So uh, we completed our pilot and we're moving into rolling out to additional teams um, and then also building what we're calling a 3D toolkit. So as I said, the tool is very complex and it does require a lot of setup work. Um, you need to have your blocks, you need to have your process, you need to have these vendor standards, um, you need to have materials analyzed. Um, and that kind of worked into your calendar and your process. So we're kind of taking the next um, couple quarters to really uh, build a foundation that's gonna be, help us in the future to scale and optimize as we move forward. <laughs> they're, they're very excited about Browseware and what we are doing. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so yeah, this is, um, we'll end with this in our 3D vision. Um, and I think one thing with 3D is we said we're always learning, we're always uh, trying to improve. And so we wanna take small steps. Um, we've set out a vision, we're kind of every day improving it. I think this slide has changed 50 times. Um, and so this is kind of what we're marching towards right now, knowing that um, our end vision, just from a product and design perspective, um, at Nordstrom is to be showing full lines in 3D and shortening our calendar, um, but tying it back to that crawl, walk, run, we're really still in our crawl phase. And as we bring more brands on, we'll be having to kind of go back and start with them from ground zero and continue to build them, um, build them up. So thank you.